two, one, go. Okay, this is a story about my uncle. I am Penn again. And it's potentially a little bit early for a bedtime story, but I hope you're ready to get at least somewhat comfy. So this is just the intro. Um, there's not actually, well, you can see there's not much to do here. I'm just sort of walking around my uncle's house, stealing his clothes. But in the locker, which usually was closed, I found and then the game pr properly starts in the next level, but this is only very short. It was suit. It resembled the one that Fred used, but smaller in size. Curiosity got the better of me, and I tried it on. It fit like it had been custom made for me. That does absolutely nothing other than the blesses the run. Mysterious room of my uncle's house. And now we just wait observed. until the game actually starts. There he kept his newest experiments, and right now it held a pad used for disposing of garbage. actually get going. So this game's really simple. Um, there aren't actually that many controls, and as Spatula was saying beforehand, the primary form of movement is grappling. But when you start, you don't actually have um, you don't have any crystals or any of the energy, so we can only walk around and, and do these super jumps. I wasn't hurt. I had no idea where the pad had taken me, but back then, and I already I just so had a horrible jump there. Or I was sure that someone had been here before me. Someone had built these bridges and It doesn't take long before we actually get the first grapple though. Where were they now? The unfortunate thing about the first level though is that if I mess stuff up too much, everything is on pretty set cycles and I'll end up having to wait um, for the platforms to spin around. Like I would already be able to jump to this next one if I hadn't already messed up. And now we get our first uh, first grapple. If you look at the back of the hand, uh, when I land actually, you can see that there's one of the things lit up, and that means I have one grapple in use when I land actually again. You can see one of those uh, three dashes on the hand li lights up. And that's how many uh, grapples you can use before landing again. So to begin with, you can only grapple once before you have to touch the floor again. But again, that goes up, and you can see that eventually I'll have uh, I'll have three of those. And already coming up, we have one of the, I don't know, more annoying tricks in the game. Because you, you're you really playing with like the respawn boundaries. Did I just hear someone say testing? Or oh, okay. <laughs> thought I was going crazy. Oh, okay. Uh, so that's exactly what I mean. I, I'm going around out of bounds here, or not where I'm supposed to be, and the uh, respawn point is really, really close to where I am. Like that on that platform, if I land just too far forward or just too far back, uh, I'll hit the respawn trigger. But we got through there, not too bad. Only had to only respawn once, so I'll take that. And we're already coming up to our second grapple. Yeah, the main, the main, um, I don't know, it's not really tech, but the, the main way of going fast in this game is just by trying to skip as much as you can by grappling in places that you're not really supposed to. Uh, for this level, there isn't that much of that. There's that trick that I did uh, just beforehand, but otherwise it's mainly just going, following the route that I should be taking, maybe skipping a few cycles, but it's, it's quite simple, and I didn't get far enough there. The later you leave it before you let go of... Um, a grapple, the further you're going to fling. I wouldn't have mattered anyway because I have to wait for this cycle, so I had to wait for that to be as close to me as possible, and then I can just jump to this one here. 
I think, yeah, because I'm all out of sync, I have to wait for this one too. If you do this level like really optimally, uh, everything is just exactly where you need it to be when you get there. It's, it's really fast. And again, I have to wait for one. I wonder whether I'm going to have to wait for the last one as well. Yeah, I do. It's this one I need to catch now. I need to ride it all the way back around. So that wasn't a great sanctuary, but it's probably the trickiest level in the game. This le this game's not very hard to speedrun. It's it's quite uh, nice to run. It's really comfy, um, but yeah, it's not very difficult. Of all the levels, that's probably the hardest to to get right because, like I said before, if you mess up just a little bit, everything is out of sync. Oh, and uh, yeah, you can also just walk through the map there. I already hit the end trigger and you can just fall down and that doesn't have collision. And now we enter the village. This is where we meet like the... I don't know what to call them. The native people of this world? I mean, this, the story is basically where I was standing in the intro is, is my uncle's garbage chute. So basically we're, I mean, we're trash. Yeah. And we just get sent off into this weird world, You're and, from here. and wow. these people are here. Just like bread. <laughs> the kind of Small. face only a mother can and love. Less hair on your face. And I'm not sure she has a mother. She knew Fred. I told her that he was my uncle, and that I was looking. But she'll be coming with us for most of the journey as well. What's an uncle? I said that he was, that I had known him all my life. Some of the voice acting in this game isn't really? the best. It's a little bit emotionless. But it was I'm done by um, a really small group of people, I think. Like Sometimes. I can't remember exactly, but I remember someone telling me before it was like just a really small project with just a few people working on it. You've never been to the village, right? Let's meet over there in the square. I'll show you around. I bet you can get there easily with your suit thing. So, I'll see you there. We're not actually going to go to the I village. An underground village inhabited by frog people, or more like salamanders. So here's another example. The, this is the sort of thing you do in this game where I just skip most of the, the rocks there. Just swing my ray all the way around. And the village is off to my right, but we can just uh, grapple along the side of it and skip the whole thing. You don't actually need to go meet her. And now I need to wait. If you if you want to do really fast strats, you can do something a bit crazy here, where you land on one of these rocks, you reset your grapples, and then you can skip landing on a platform. That, uh, I was about to point at the screen. You can't see that. Um, this platform over here, you can skip landing on that if you do that trick. But it's not worth trying most of the time unless you're really going for a for a really good time. It only saves a few seconds, a couple seconds, and it's really really tricky to land on that rock. It's so small. And the some of the collision in this game is a, not the best anyway. So here's a cutscene where I would uh, get given my third grapple. But instead, I can just go around, pick up the, the crystal, and uh, just reset my checkpoint. And now I have all three, and I skipped quite a long cutscene where you just sort of uh, lose the ability to jump or grapple or anything, and you just have to stand around and listen to Maddie and some old dude talk for a bit. I don't know why I let go of that grapple so early. But the later, yeah, I think I mentioned before, I'm not sure whether I did. The later you let go of the grapple, the more speed you're going to gain, like the closer you are to the uh, grapple point. So you can sort of fling yourself ac across, even though this category is called no fling, because um, technically flinging is something slightly different. There's a category in this game, well, there's normal any percent, which involves flinging, but then there's also a category called blind fling, which is uh, where you set a bind in the game to cap your frame rate at about three. And when you use the grapple at 3 FPS, it's um, it's pretty crazy. You end up flying across the entire map just by left clicking like once. Also, I've already hit the uh, end level trigger, so it doesn't actually matter what I do here. Uh, but yeah, I'm not. I'm obviously not using that. The blind thing clattery is just it's a little bit of a meme, I think. I think only two people actually did it anyway. 
Some of the normal flings are kind of cool, but I prefer just running in no fling. Just playing the game reasonably normally. Okay, so now we have uh, kind of an annoying trick where normally I'd be playing the game on higher gamma than I am now. Uh, so what I'm actually going to do is go into the options and change it. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to see where I need to go because it's pitch black. I need to grapple on the wall over there. So quickly, uh, gamma. I didn't want to do the whole run like this because then it looks kind of shitty in the first area in particular. I might have grappled too close to me there. Uh, we're fine. Yeah, if you do that without with low gamma, you cannot see where you're supposed to grapple because you're not supposed to really be able to grapple most of the walls in this game. But for some reason, it's kind of arbitrary as to which ones you can. So I'm actually skipping like shitloads of this level at the moment. Like a couple small cutscenes where you're talking to Maddie and just a lot of running around that you can just avoid by knowing which walls that for some reason you can grapple on. What was that? I had never heard a creature sounding as terrifying, and I imagined it wouldn't be happy about visitors. At the end of this level, though, I'm gonna obviously change the gamma back, otherwise, the next two are gonna look like shit, too. It is really dark down there. But this whole level, the whole the, the idea and like the theme is that it's hard to see. Uh, that's not gonna work. Yeah, okay. I kind of screwed up there. You need to sort of launch yourself a little bit off this rock. And I hit the flower. Uh, <laughs> nice. There you go, that'll do. You don't need much distance off of it, but just a little bit so you can get up there. And again, for some reason, these walls you can grapple on. I think I went a bit high there, yeah. This isn't going to work, I don't think. Uh, unless I can just... Yeah, actually, I think this is okay. Okay, uh, no. Because you can't stand on all of that. I don't want to land down there. So. That was also bad. Need to aim about there. That should be fine. Get some proper speed around the corner. And then, yeah, you can land higher up here. The idea with this guy is that you can't move when he's uh, searching around. You need to wait for him to close his eye. Um, but you can still move the camera. And as soon as he starts the animation of hiding again, you can just move on. And because we skipped the first part of this area, uh, we only actually have to wait for one cycle. So that's the end of the level. Uh, gamma. Said, don't move when the high is open. Yes, we did it. You're awesome. I knew you had it in you. That was close. We had made it through, and I felt like nothing stand in our way of finding Fred. I didn't actually really go into the story of this game. It's not exactly groundbreaking. Uh, oh, also, first of all, one. this is going to look kind of weird. Um, what's supposed to happen here when you first play the game is a massive airship is supposed to be blocking this, and when you walk up to it, you're going to see the screen shake a little bit and hear a noise, and then it's meant to reveal this area. But as soon as you've been in the game once, even if you're new game, it doesn't appear again. This is it. So it just looks this a bit weird. Her reacting to this site really late because she's shows. lived in the cave all her life. Just look at the sky. Uh, but yeah, the the story is is um, I think the I think our uncle like sent a bunch of eggs into space for some reason through his garbage chute. I, d I don't know. Um, and then we follow him out there, uh, trying to find him basically. Uh, and yeah, that's literally it. We're trying to find our uncle. It's pretty great. Should be good. Along my journey, I had seen many pieces of floating rock, but here they were much bigger. 
Some were big enough to fit whole villages. How was this possible? Maybe it had to do with the crystals that seemed to be everywhere. If the legends were true, I'm not gonna catch that one. I think civilization was younger Dang. than the village. Yet they were making great progress. They invented crystal-powered machines, produced their own fabrics, and built houses out of bricks and stone. It was like a civilization was forming before my eyes. Is that going to be enough? Just about. You have to really swing yourself around there to be able to make it. Because, like I said before, I only have three grapples. And if I'd have missed it, then <laughs> I'd have to respawn, and the checkpoint's quite far away, though. Hey, let's play a game. I bet that you can't get through this part without using grapple device. We lost. <laughs> Told you you couldn't do it. It's a pretty fun game. And now we get the next form of movement in the game. Um, I say next, it's the only other one. Uh, yeah, so we, we're going to get something here called the rocket boots. Uh, and we can use them to, particularly in the next level, we're going to use them to skip like a lot. A lot. Oh, what's that? The boots, look! Couldn't you wear those? And basically what they do, similar to the, the grapple, you can only use them once uh, while you're in the air. You need to land again to recharge them. But you can just use them like that to, to launch yourself. And obviously that has the potential to... I mean, we can skip quite a lot. Uh, wow. I didn't actually manage to land on that. For some reason I just kind of slid along the top of it. So fast that my eyes watered and my belly was full of butterflies. Never fully in control, but still feeling like the coolest kid in the universe. <laughs> I guess I just described it, didn't I? My sensitivity is lower than I'm used to, I think. Oh, I don't have any more grapples. But yeah, most of this level, there's not much you can skip because obviously, as you can see, there aren't many places for me to even grapple. I've said that, there's obviously what I'm doing right now, not really supposed to be doing this. But it, do, it none of the skips in this area are huge, other than one cutscene skip coming up, which saves a lot of time. A great icy mountain loomed before me, and I felt a chill run down. You can skip some of the cycles of these propellers just by grabbing the middle of them. We hadn't seen any people around yet. Okay, so the cutscene skips coming up here. Um, when you land in this next area, you put Maddie down and she goes running around talking to some of the local people. Uh, but obviously that's really slow because again, you can't leave without her. So instead, if you just fall right between these two like jetties, uh, you can respawn and instantly spam rocket boots again and we can just jump straight over the, the island and not hit the cutscene. Saves. So it's quite a long one as well. And I'm getting like, the images are being burned onto the screen, that's quite nice. <laughs> That's a little distracting, not gonna lie. Maddie was silent for a while. It seemed like she was thinking hard on something. Okay, and now we're nearly the end of this level, and then there's only one more left. Um, it's the longest one, in theory, but we skip a lot of the next level, because now we have uh, the rocket boots, and it actually has boundaries in the next level, whereas this one kind of doesn't, really. You can skip this cycle as well by grabbing the middle, but I kind of messed it up, so... 
I played it safe and just grabbed the propeller. Quickly, grab a hold of that crate. And this is where we leave Maddie behind. She wants to stay with the locals because of a cutscene that never happened about them accepting her for who she was. So we kind of just have to stand around for a bit. There's not much to do here. Good day. Here's a boat to Ice King. Though I'd take the other one if I were you. That one goes back to the boat. Um, I, um, what's Wait a minute. I was thinking. I, I don't know if I should go with you. I mean, I want to, but I also want to, well, stay here. Maybe it's strange, but I just feel like these people liked me. Are you all moved? Accepted me for who I am. Kind of like you. I want to it's be very touching. You and help you find Fred. I don't know what I want the most. I told Madeline. Fred's our uncle, by the way. Whatever choice she made. I just never thought about it until now that maybe... Maybe it wasn't Fred I was looking for when I came with you. Maybe I was just looking for a way out. Somewhere to be free. It's pretty dark. And I know that if anyone can find Fred, it's you. If you meet him, when you meet him, tell him to come see me, okay? I promised. Thank you. Hear yeah, the I'm emotion in that promise? You. He meant it. He meant it that. be the same without you around. Goodbye, friend. I said goodbye to Maddie, and I had a feeling that this was the last time I'd see her. But even in this sad moment, I was happy for her. She had found a place where she belonged. Okay, now the end of the level is, is coming up. In the air that but reminded me of the hot summer nights. We don't really want to go to the ice cave. But as the sun was setting, I could feel the chill creeping up on me, and the path we were traveling on seemed to lead us into a second ice age. Winter was coming. Okay. Final level of the game. And it starts with a pretty annoying jump as well, because we skip, we already skip a lot. You spend to go all the way in there, and to a bunch of blocks that are falling from the sky. Uh, and then this ice falls down, but instead you can just grapple the, grapple the blocks inside of it straight away. I'm quite happy I got that first time, because it's hard to see what, you, well, you can't see what you're doing. And the actual hitbox for the block is way smaller than you might think. And again, straight away, we're going to do some weird stuff here. You're not going to be able to stand on there, and you can't really, you slide straight off. But because you touch it, it resets your grapples and your rocket boots. So we can just sort of boost along here, get it back, and climb all the way up here straight away. Which, again, skips out quite a lot. Same thing again. Jesus, this mouse. I mean, my sensitivity. It's like, it's really hard to turn quickly. Especially when I don't have a mouse mount either. Yeah, we just skipped like the whole first section of the ice caves already. And it pretty much doesn't stop in this level because of the fact that, again, we have all of these boundaries around us we can kind of abuse. We're going to do the same thing pretty much the way here. Rather than going all the way around this whole room, you you do pretty much travel everywhere in it, and we can just skip straight to the end of it. Just by boosting up here and, and running along some boundaries again. And it also means that we can do uh, the next area much faster too, but I'll explain that in a second. So you're meant to go around this entire room, like I said, uh, and then you end up coming down here. And the platform that you have to land on, and you don't have a choice because obviously three grapples before you land, so you have to land there. When you do, your rocket boots break. But because we do it like this, we don't have to land there and we keep our boots. And that means in the next area, uh, we can do it much faster because, well, <laughs> we can fly. So this whole climb, you're going to do without rocket boots, but we can just skip most of it. Oh, of course. I forgot you can't make that. Mm. 
all of this you're meant to do with just the grapple. And then we're getting up to the campsite in a second where you're meant to repair them. Uh, so there's like a section here where when you cross this line you have to walk for a bit. But again, we have our rocket boots so we can just boost through it. Uh, and then the repair them. The fire was still smoldering. And I could faintly uh, pick up the jump. smell of the aftershave he always used. I was close. Should be good up. enough to make us. I could feel it. Nice. He had left some tools behind that I could And straight again tools. straight away we're gonna skip some more stuff. You're gonna go around there, it. climb along the icicles, all the way around this thing. But instead, because they put in an Easter egg in this game, we can uh, use that to get to the next section. Just land quickly there. And go around and find Olaf. And if he wasn't there, we wouldn't be able to do this, but because he is, we can just uh, skip straight to the next section. And we're already getting close to the end of the game. It's not a very long game. Casually, it's probably going to take you a couple of hours. But again, we're going to go through, be going through the caves here with some falling uh, stalactites. I think it's tights, right? The ones that are hanging. I don't know. Um, I'm going to grapple through a massive cave, but more boundary hopping. Whoa. So the, I didn't actually explain. These crystals um, recharge your grapples, which is why I can grapple for ages here without touching the floor. I completely forgot to explain that at the start of the ice caves. Um, but yeah, we can just fly through this whole area by recharging them at each point. And we're about to find our uncle, finally. It was dark all Once you pass like the final stag stag I still think they're tights, right? I don't know. Um Oh no. <laughs> well, that's unfortunate. Once you pass those, you lose control. So you're meant to rocket boost through this tunnel, but I wasn't concentrating, so I hit the trigger. Now I have to walk all the way to him. It's not exactly much slower, but it still kind of sucks. And now we have a lot of uh, waiting around and not doing anything before the final part of the game, which is the epilogue, which again, there isn't much to do in, so this is pretty much the end of the game. We have to listen to some super exciting story. And you're wearing the suit I made you. But how can you be here? I said that I found the suit in his workshop, and that I came looking for him. Oh, I'm sorry for being away for so long, but I've been busy down here, you see. The frog people. His suit is way more ghetto. It's like adventure suit. Do you remember the eggs I found before? I sent them here by accident, and I had to follow. Yeah, so I was right. He just sent some eggs into space in his garbage suit. were empty before, but my experiment has made them full of life. I have conducted research on them and documented everything about them. And I built a new crystal-powered pad to be able to get back to my colleagues, show them how fantastic this all is. I interrupted Fred and told him about Maddie, how we came all the way to Star Haven together, and that I had promised to ask him if he would go see her there. What a handsome Maddie. fellow. My little Maddie. I should have taken her to see Starhaven long ago. She was always so curious about the strays. Her letter. I wanted to protect her. Or rather, protect myself from losing her. Oh, Dude, sweet love. Life. I'm not going home. What does research or praise matter when I can be here with these creatures? They need me. It's just as well. I don't trust this pad for more than one ride anyway. You need 
but he's willing to send me on I it. What a nice uncle. And I asked if I could stay with him and Maddie instead. I'm sorry, Nathan. As much as I enjoy having you here, you must go home. Explore the world on your own. Have your own adventures. I reluctantly agreed to go home. I was going to miss my uncle. I will miss you too. But I'm sure you'll be phenomenal on your own. And don't worry about me or Maddie. You'll be fine. The pad is yours, boy. When you're ready. And now we just have the epilogue, which is pretty much the same as the intro, other than skipping the credits. Time's coming up, by the way. It's not too far away. As soon as I lose control at the end of this section. No. Good night, sweetie. Wait, Dad. Does that mean Fred is still there? Who knows? That was the last time I saw him. Don't you miss him? I do. Sometimes, but I don't worry about him because I know that wherever he is, he's on his biggest adventure yet. For some reason, though, uh, compared to the intro, everything here has way, uh, like the collision is way larger. I don't understand why, but it means you have to take the corners really wide. It's. I'm, I'm not sure why that is. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it's because I'm coming here as an adult rather than a kid, but it just feels really off. You bump into everything in the epilogue, whereas the intro you can take really, really tight lines around the corners. But she just cleaned up. We made you a small memorial for a while. Oh yeah, sweet epilogue strats coming up. Just like I used to. Sometimes I can you can walk over this box. Holy shit! Calling from the observatory, asking me to get you this tool for that. I never told my mother about that day. All right. As soon as I reach the top of these stairs, it's pretty much time. So. Can I believe it? After all these years. And time. That's a story about my uncle. Thirty-two thirty. That's not bad, actually. I'm quite happy with that. I can hear you know. How's it going? Some ASMR would have suited this game, actually. It's quite comfy. Thanks to you, I have found an even greater adventure. Thank you. Love, your nephew. And there we go. Yeah, I'm, that's it. There's nothing else I want to say or show. That's the story of my uncle. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Cheers.